So many people go their entire lives absolving themselves of the most important decisions they could make, of the most important actions they could take, because that's not only what affects you, your life and your happiness, but everyone around you and ultimately the country. So I wanted to tell you something here, a story that occurred this week. And I, you know, I was talking about this uh, in a morning at pitch meeting. And I didn't really realize this was something that we, I could tell on air, but I think it was uh, Tim from HR. I said, you know what, you should talk about that. So I, I was at the gym this week and there's a, there's a guy in there, uh, a black guy uh, who I know, and he's not, you know, he's really black. Um, and uh, like really black, like okay. really black. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Nubian? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice guy, he, he uh, you know, Christian guy, he uh, coaches, like he coaches basketball for underprivileged privileged kids at a church. And we talk all the time. I go in, we always enjoy each other's company. Um, I was just talking with him about like jujitsu. He was talking about basketball. We were kind of learning from each other. And the conversation transitioned to politics right at one point. And it, it started with me, I think we were talking about uh, athletics and the whole kind of transgender athletics thing. And so it started with that. And I talked about, you know, transgender athletes and, and, and uh, men winning rem- women's wrestling meets. He's, he goes, man, what? When, when, is this, when is this happening? And I said, what, what, where have you been? I said, where have you been? You don't, right. you don't know about that. Do you know about the te- case in Texas? It's in Texas with the father and his son. He said, what? He has to raise his boy as a girl? He was like, that's, that's, I, you making that up? Because I know you do your little show. And I said, no, I do, I do my little show. And it is. It's, it, <laughs> that was demeaning, but I appreciate the way you framed it. <laughs> But no, this is real. And he was like, man, I can't believe that. I said, yeah, you really should probably, you know, get involved with this a little bit more, you know, learn about it. And uh, he started talking, he asked, well, what do you think about politics? We started talking about Bernie Sanders. And uh, he said, because I know I got some friends who like, they like Bernie Sanders, but I don't really follow that a lot. Like, what do you think? I said, well, I don't know. What do you think about a 90% income tax? He goes, what? Hmm. What? And this is how he talks. He goes, what, 90%? Come on. Come on, dude. I said, no, 90%. I said, just right now, run a YouTube search. Uh, run a, you can see Bernie Sanders saying that a 90% tax wouldn't be completely out of line. And as we're talking, he's sitting there going, like, man, that's crazy. This other guy comes up, and I know him. He's also a good guy, Christian guy, but he's a Chicago guy. Yeah, so you yeah. know what that means. He's a Chicago union liberal. Mm. And he walks up, and he's this kind of guy who tries to bulldoze a conversation. He goes like, oh, what are you talking about, uh, Bernie Sanders taxing 90%? And I said, yeah, you know, talking about taxing 90%. He goes, yeah, yeah, well, uh, do you, uh, you, that's because do you like your roads? Right away, he's going to this generic socialism argument. And the black guy's like, yeah. black guy, what I love is the black <laughs> I don't want to use their name, so I am saying black guy, so whatever, you can be offended if you want. He says, well, do you like your uh, roads? And the black guy goes, Roads. <laughs> he's like, he's like, like, what you talking about? Like, I see his brain. He's like, that's what we call a non sequitur. But he goes, roads. And the guy goes, yeah. How do you think a government works? Roads, police department, social security. And I said, right. Social security, Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, public schools, uh, all, DMV. All, uh, DMV, post office, all, all programs that work really well. And the black guy goes, yeah, but they don't, though. <laughs> <laughs> and so that set Chicago white guy off. He, goes, uh, and he starts going nuts. He goes, uh, he starts going, oh, this is Donald Trump. He goes, I don't care what you are. I'm a Christian, but Donald Trump is a horrible man because no one treats people like that. I said, well, treat people like what? He goes, oh, what? Do you watch the news? <laughs> He goes, do you watch the news? And the black guy's like, he kind of does it. And I was like, just stop. He goes, do you watch the news? It's terrible. I said, listen, whether he's a good guy or not, I think that we have a a rip-roaring economy and we're better off. He goes, oh, 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 a rip-roaring economy? Why do you say that? I said, well, I don't know. We have the lowest unemployment that we've had in decades. We have the highest labor force participation rate. We have a job surplus. We have $5,000 as a median household increase for middle-income families, not including the super wealthy. Uh, I think this is a pretty good thing. And I said, also, uh, lowest black unemployment, right? And the black guy now goes like, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And more black businesses being started than ever I could before. Relate. He goes, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true. I read about that. And the guy goes, yeah, well, what about the GDP? I said, well, well, hold on a second. I thought, I thought we want to talk about sort of these metrics that really affect everyday Americans. He goes, you know what? He starts bringing up his phone. And he brings up something about the GDP. And it, didn't, didn't, it wasn't really relevant. And I refuted it and pointed it to another source. And he goes, yeah, well, that's the problem. You Republicans only care about money. I said, well, you brought it up. <laughs> yeah. You brought up the GDP. <laughs> so at this point, he goes, yeah, you Republicans only care about, uh, about uh, your greed. And um, the blind uh. guy, he, goes, he turns to me. So this guy, I, I will say, love the guy. He's a little fickle. Because then he turns back and he goes, yeah, but you kind of do, though. <laughs> he goes, right, like you Republicans, you like, yeah, like a lot of white Republicans, like y'all, y'all really care about money, like a whole lot, right? And I said, well, not real. I don't think so. He goes, no. I said, no, I really don't think that's the case. He goes, what, 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 what do you mean? I said, okay, right now I pay half. Half of my income. Okay? He goes, yeah. 
I said, you probably pay pretty pretty close to that. Probably not because, you know, you're in Texas, but if you were in California, you'd be paying close to half your income. I know that uh, he's a pretty successful business person. He goes, yeah, okay. I said, so I want to know uh, if half isn't enough, what number is enough? You tell me what number is enough. How would we pay for all these programs that Mr. Chicago is proposing? And as far as greed, I, I would like to know, and this isn't original, this is something from Thomas Sowell, I believe, and it's been repeated. I said, what I would like to know is, why is it greedy for me to want to keep more than half, but not greedy for someone else to want to take more than half? And he said, yeah. <laughs> That's food for thought. That's what they just went, that's food for thought. And he went back to the sky, food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, like, listen, this is, a, this is a good example of, is he black? Yes. Are there cultural differences at play here? Am I colorblind? No. It's very entertaining to white people sometimes <laughs> to listen to black culture. Because food for thought. And then I don't know, the Chicago guy went on the elliptical and uh, it, that was that. But the point that I'm making here is this is a black guy um, who is not a Republican at all. And afterwards, by the way, he took me aside later the next day and he said, you know, I, yo, you talk about distribution, like, I think Trump is like, like, I think he's like a dick, but yeah. he, I do, I agree with what you said. Like, I think it's a lot, I think it's better now than Obama. And he started talking about that. I'm going, Here, here's the point, folks. Sometimes convincing people is not that hard. Sometimes it just takes trying. I want people to understand this. Just having those conversations in day-to-day -day life, I can't tell you how many times that's happened. That's before we've done this show. That's before we've had thousands of people line up to go to school shows and, and talk about how this program or, or other programs have influenced their sort of political walk. It all started with me having conversations with people. That was the basis for Change My Mind. Sometimes people go, right. well, why, why, don't you do more why don't you do more debates? Well, we will do more debates and we do debates in the show, but Change My Mind is not about a debate. Change My Mind is to showcase what I just described, how you can have conversations with people in everyday life and either convince them or convince someone who's watching you talk with them. In other words, when the Chicago guy horned in, I wasn't trying to convince him, but I knew that if I spoke articulately, if I didn't get mad, if I kept my cool and I made my points and I was speaking truthfully, that the black gentleman would hear my point, and he did. Sometimes it just takes trying. And when I hear people, I've heard this a lot, some people on the right, you know, they complain about immigration, and, and I, I do obviously have a problem with illegal immigration, and as it relates to legal immigration, I do think that we should be uh, pretty strict on who we allow in, and we should be picking the best and the brightest. I think we should have standards, so I want to be clear about that. But sometimes you have people who say, well, you know, the thing is, you just look at the demographics from people coming in from these countries, black people or, or brown people, they vote overwhelmingly Democrat, and you know what, it, it, the more you, you let come in, we're just, we're going to lose, a, we'll never have any more conservative principles. Hold on a second. First off, I don't agree with the premise because demographics are changing. Look at the electoral map with Donald Trump in the Midwest and Chicago, uh, Chicago uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, right? These states that no one thought he had a chance in winning, yours truly included. Those things change. But when you say, well, these demographics, there's no way to change it. If they come in, we're going to lose it. For, what does that do? It absolves you of having that conversation that I just had at the gym. Did it mean that I missed a workout? Sure. And I was grumpy that day, because if I don't get some exercise in, I'm usually kind of a prick. But the point is, when someone says, this is a demographic problem, it, me it absolves you of any responsibility as it relates to changing somebody's mind. And this is something that we do a lot. A lot of the time, people act as though everything is out of their control. Like, well, you know, that's just, that's the way this system works. Well, you know, it could be in your job. Uh, you know what, they only, they only promote people who are the boss's son. Could be in your marriage. Well, you know, my wife is just never gonna understand that. We do this a lot. We act as though far more is out of our control uh, than I think we give ourselves credit for. And I wanna ask, this is a challenge for, for this week uh, to you. Which responsibilities do you think you've been uh, uh, absolving yourself of? I know I just screwed up the grammatical phrase and audio is gonna kill me. <laughs> of which responsibilities have you been absolving yourself? What do you think maybe is something that you could do or you should be doing but you've made excuses that are outside of your control, so there's no way you could do it. Like, you know what, you're never gonna change, you're never gonna get more than, it used to be, 3% of the black vote. Then Donald Trump came around. I think it was eight or 10%. That's a pretty big shift. Doesn't mean it's gonna be 50%, but something changed. Thank God that Donald Trump and his, uh, his team didn't say, we're gonna write off the black vote. Thank God, I didn't, thank God they didn't just say, we're gonna write off the Midwestern vote. They could have done that. They could have absolved themselves because you know what? There's a precedent and no one else had done it. Just because no one else had done it, has done it, doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to do it. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. But it's a lot easier to tell yourself, uh, this can't be done. And I'll tell you what, if you show me what it is that you know or think you should be doing, 
but these responsibilities you've been abdicating, I'll show you what it is that should be at the top of your to-do list. So many people go their entire lives absolving themselves of the most important decisions they could make, of the most important actions they could take, because that's not only what affects you, your life and your happiness, but everyone around you and ultimately the country. I know that not all of you have a show like this, with, we're really blessed with this platform, but guess what? Every single one of you goes to the gym, goes to work, or goes to school, or has family gatherings where these conversations can come up. And you should be doing it every single day. You should be living it every single day, no matter how daunting it may seem. You may have a Thanksgiving table filled with, with nothing but the Black Panthers and Afro-lesbian PhD studies majors. And you know what? One of them could turn into Kanye West. That's what happened. His dad was a Black Panther. Do you realize that demographically that should not exist? Thank God someone didn't pass the buck and just say, you know what, that's, uh, that's a lost cause. It's not. There are very, very few lost causes. If you're convincing yourself that that's the case and that's why you're not doing whatever it is that you should be doing, stop. Take inventory right now. What is it that you've been absolving for yourself that you could be doing? Every single day, you can push this ball forward. You can move the ball. You don't need me to do it, but everyone has to do it. And it starts with saying, you know what? It's probably possible. Let me give it a whirl. And then you end up with a guy saying, yeah, food for thought. Food for f***ing thought. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this clip. If you don't, these are the ABCs of me, baby. You can just click next video and put it in double speed. Of course, search doesn't necessarily work. Subscriptions, notifications don't necessarily work. Just bookmark this page, check in. We do a new video every single day, except for Sunday. And if you don't want this content to disappear, join Mug Club at lighterwithcredit.com slash mug club. It's only $69 if you're a student, veteran, or active military. And um, if you don't, you know, listen, I, I don't want to say that you're hellbound, but it, it doesn't look good for you.